G'day reefers, I'm Cam the Fish Guy and you're watching Gallery Aquatica TV. So we haven't done an aquarium maintenance video in quite some time and we've got a bit of an unusual reef tank to have a look at today and we'll run you through how we do the maintenance on this tank. Now what makes this tank unique is that it's almost entirely made up of soft corals and anemones. And so it's different to most of the other tanks which have a variety of SPS, LPS and SOFs this is entirely a soft coral tank. So anyway, we're here, uh, we're loaded up with the ute, we've got everything that we need, and so let's go and have a look at the tank and we'll show you just why a soft coral tank can be a really nice uh, tank to have in your house, easy to look after, and um, we'll go check it out now. Let's go reefers. <laughs> Here we are in front of the tank with uh, lots of soft corals and the first thing you notice about this tank is it's actually built into the wall. Now this makes for uh, a beautiful aesthetic to the tank and it really sort of complements the room and the position that it's in, um, basically where the breakfast table is. Um, so let's have a look at the tank. So you can see that we've got lots of soft corals there's some beautiful Corella morphs, there's some Xenia, um, there's also a heap of anemones. Now, the interesting thing about the anemones are that only one anemone was put into this tank and it has split and split and split to the point that you could almost argue that there are too many anemones. There are a small number of LPS corals, large polyp stony corals. So we've got a Giardini here. There's a bubble coral as well. Um, there's a Blasto and a, a Lobo. It's a really beautiful tank. And um, given the, the hardy nature of what we would typically describe as basic corals, um, it really creates a nice, easy to maintain tank. And I think it looks, it looks pretty good. So anyway, it's built into the wall and that allows for some, uh, some really good space behind the tank for the filtration and the maintenance. Um, so we'll go behind the tank and we'll see how the, the tank works with the filtration and the lighting. Um, and we'll also run you through how we do the maintenance and the service on this tank. Let's have a look. So within this cupboard is the back of the tank and the filtration. So let's have a look. So as you can see, there's heaps of space for everything that's required to, to run and look after the tank. We've got two Hydra 52 lights. Now, it's a six by two by two and a half tank. So it's a large tank. And the reason why the Hydras are mounted so high is so that the spread covers the entire tank. And given the type of corals and the anemones we have in this tank, the lighting doesn't need to be ultra intense. So we've gone for a, a greater height for better spread over the intensity that you get from having the lights lower. So you can see even more of the anemones going through here and more of the Corella morphs. Not visible from the front, but uh, they just grow so quickly that uh, they've grown everywhere in the tank. So with the water flow, uh, we've got two wave makers, one on either side of the tank. And I'll just make the note that this is pre-service. We haven't done any algae cleaning or anything on this tank yet. Um, so one of the jobs we'll do today is we'll clean off the algae from these wave makers. We'll have a look at the filtration underneath the tank. You can see the overflow drains down 
through this um, bench. So down the overflow, almost entirely covered with coralline algae, down into the back section here. We've got the protein skimmer turned off at the moment and it's a very basic filtration. It's really just a, a bit of live rock, a bit of rubble. Um, we've got marine pure biological media, a bit of matting as well, and the return pump and a dedicated chiller pump. The dosing is very basic and that dosing shelf was the dosing shelf is, it's never fallen over yet. Not one that we installed, but it does the job. And you can see it's dosing uh, refusion one and two, which is keeping the calcium and the carbonate hardness exactly where it needs to be. So this is the setup. And as you can see, it, it works really well. It's totally uh, you know, adequate for the types of corals and the anemones that we're keeping in this tank. And now we'll uh, do the service on the tank. So we'll start with the, we'll test the water and then we'll do a water change. So we're about to test the water chemistry. Uh, this tank has always run at very low nutrient levels. The nitrate and the phosphate have pretty much always been zero on this tank. And I would put that down to very careful feeding. Uh, the, the fish probably only get fed a minimal amount but that's okay because there's only a small number of fish in this tank. The salinity has always been what I would consider perfect. Specific gravity at 1.025. The pH has always been okay. The KH was a little bit low last time and the calcium was a little bit high. So we'll check these levels again and possibly make some adjustments to the dosing pump if we find that the levels aren't where we want them to be. So this sump has got an RO reservoir in the end, which has been sectioned off so that we can fill that area with RO water, which then will feed into the sump proper as required to compensate for water that is lost through evaporation. So it's completely dry at the moment. So luckily we, we turned up with a heap of RO water. And so we're going to just feed some water into that section to fill it up. So we've got our RO water in drums. And I'm just using a siphon hose. Just feeding it straight in. Whilst this is siphoning into the tank, I'm going to get set up to do the gravel vac. Now, because there's only access from one side of this tank, we can only do the gravel vac from this side. So I'll have to stand up on the bench and carefully aim the water into a bucket, but there's a fair bit of algae on the substrate. So the gravel vac is a very important part of the maintenance process for this tank. So different tanks have got different requirements for how you access the tank itself. And this one is a little bit more difficult. The only real way of getting into gravel back is to stand up here. You can't stand up properly because of the height of the ceiling. But um, it is a bit awkward, but you just do what you have to do to ensure that the tank maintenance is done properly. So anyway, I'll start gravel, gravel back in the front. Got my siphon going into the bucket and it's a little bit different having to do the gravel backing from above it's difficult to see it's probably difficult for the camera to see as well but uh, but it is a very important part of this job so you can just see the clownfish swimming in the anemones they love, the, they love the anemones, but they have this habit of biting my arm. Of course, I don't do it when the camera's wrong. Oh, there we go. <laughs> They're very, very protective of their anemones. 
which is crazy because there's about 50 anemones in here. But anyway, it's a clownfish is prerogative. So I'm getting right into the corner with this gravel backing. And you can see by the color of the water that's coming up through the gravel, uh, gravel vac that there's a lot of bacterial silt in the substrate. Um, in this patch here. So that indicates to me that the flow is probably not quite as good as it should be. And I have a feeling that one of these wave makers might actually not be working. So that's something that I'll have a look at in a minute. But because of the types of corals, they can actually tolerate low flow quite well. And you can see in this cave here, where I'm gravel backing now, there's a diadema urchin. Now diadema urchins are great to keep algae under control but they do make it a little bit dangerous to uh, to do the maintenance on the tank because if you put your hand into a diadema urchin unknowingly the pain from the spines is it's incredible so I'll probably spend the next 15 to 20 minutes gravel backing all of this substrate uh, in a minute, I'll have to turn the return pump off, but I'm going to let the sump drain out as much as possible before I do that. I'm going to try and maximise the size of this water change. So I always try and multitask. Before I tip this dirty gravel back water down the toilet, I'm just going to set up the next drum. So I put the next full drum up on top. We need about three maybe even four of these drums for the auto top up reservoir. So I'll get this one started. So another in interesting thing about this tank it's not just the anemones which are multiplying out of control, but also these little turbo snails. Now, there's, it's hard to see because they hide amongst the rock work, but there'd be literally hundreds of these snails in this tank, and they've just been breeding and breeding and breeding. So this tank is, uh, is very good at um, breeding anemones and turbo snails. I love these blue corella morphs. It's a bit of a shame that you can't see them from the front, but they're, uh, again, they're also multiplying so quickly that They'll probably grow around the park sooner or later. So I'm just cleaning out the overflow and the weir combing and um, I've just borrowed one of Anya's toothbrushes to give it a bit of a clean. It's the best thing to really get into the grooves and remove all of this algae. So um, I've taken the weir combing off and I'll show you how I clean that. So that is absolutely chockers. Heaps of algae on that. And you can pick it out. It's a bit slow and frustrating, but what I do is just take to it with a brush I hold on the side of the bucket like this so I can get a good angle. Just give it a good brush. Could probably even soak this in some vinegar to get rid of this coralline algae. So now I'll do this side. It's a 
about it pretty much. Cool. So I'm also going to use a toothbrush on the wave makers. Now, about every six months or so, I'll take these wave makers out, give them a good clean in vinegar to remove the coralline. But for now, I'm just trying to get rid of the bulk of this filamentous algae so that it can flow at its uh, maximum level. Okay, so we've done the gravel siphoning and we've cleaned the wave makers and the weir combing of algae. So now we're going to do the water change. So we're going to siphon out about half of the water and fill it back up with natural seawater that we collect down the Gold Coast on a high tide. So that will sit there, go start the siphon. One of the good things about this job is that where we drain the water to, it's probably about six meters lower than the tank. So with that big head height, it gives us really strong draw through the siphon and we can drain this tank very quickly. leaves us with a few minutes to get the rest of the gear ready so that we can fill this tank up quickly. absolutely exhausted they all look you know really sort of sloppy and just can't even stand up right basically look like look like they're melting all right so this is how far we're going to drain it i'm going to take the drainage hose out and hook it up to the return and fill this tank up so this is the hose that we were using to drain the tank and we're going to use the same hose to fill the tank back up again connect it to our pump now i'll just open up the water tank on the ute and we'll be good to go So this is the speed of the flow without the pump in operation. So it's, it's pretty quick. However, we want to have these corals and anemones under the water as quickly as possible. So I am going to use that pump. I'll switch that on now. the tank to the correct level and we know that because the sump is full now I'm just gonna put away the hose I'll just finish up the algae I haven't really done the algae on the back glass here and we'll wipe down the tank and that will be the job done so we've finished our service on the soft coral tank and I think this tank really demonstrates that uh, a, a tank with basic corals, only a few fish, can be uh, a beautiful addition to your house and uh, makes for a very low maintenance, colourful tank and probably the best thing about the soft corals is that they're constantly moving. The anemones are moving in the flow, the xenia, uh, the LPS, everything's moving and it looks great. 
So uh, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of um, Gallery Quaker TV and uh, thanks for watching and we'll bring more tanks and uh, more maintenance videos, more installations. We've got a lot coming up. So stay tuned and uh, thanks for watching. So that's our video for today. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, hit the subscribe as well. We'll be putting out videos every week showing a, a new tank with new products. There's gonna be lots in all the videos. I'm Cam the Fish Guy and keep on reefing.